Today I'm making trompo tacos. Trompo is a vertical spinning spit of pork meat. The pork is sliced thin, covered in a red adobo sauce, and layered on a long, thin, spinning metal rod to cook. Since I don't have a vertical rotating grill, I'm going to be cooking my meat in a pan today. In Nuevo Leon, Mexico, the meat is almost a neon red color from the ground red pepper they add to the adobo, but since I wasn't able to find this pepper, I used smoked paprika instead. This gave me a less vibrant color than I'd hoped for, but it still came out delicious. I might try this again in the future if I'm able to get my hands on some ground red pepper. For today's meal, we're going to be making the trompo along with some homemade corn tortillas and a creamy green zucchini salsa to top our tacos. The full list of ingredients will be in the video description. The pork needs to marinate in the adobo for a while, so let's start prepping that. I have about 2 pounds of pork shoulder steaks that I'm going to slice into thin strips and set aside. Into a blender, I'm adding a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, the juice of one orange, four cloves of garlic, about a fifth of a bar of achiote paste, two teaspoons of salt, a quarter teaspoon of cumin, and a quarter teaspoon of oregano. We're going to blend this until smooth before adding in a tablespoon of smoked paprika for some added color and blending again. My marinade is thicker than I want and my orange wasn't very juicy, so I'm going to add the juice of two more oranges to the mix and blend to combine. Now that I've got a smoother, more liquid marinade, we're pouring this over our sliced pork and with a gloved hand or tongs, mixing the adobo in evenly, covering with some plastic wrap and sitting in the fridge to marinate for at least 30 minutes up to overnight. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know I love fresh corn tortillas. They're easy to make and taste way better than store-bought. We're going to want to let the masa rest and hydrate for at least a half hour. So into a bowl I'm adding 2 cups of maseca or yellow corn flour, and I like to use maseca nixtamalizada. It's a brown bag, and I've found it gives me softer, more flavorful tortillas. We're also adding in 2 teaspoons of flour, 1 teaspoon baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, and mixing thoroughly. Add hot water, a little at a time, until you have a smooth ball of masa. Cover and set aside while we start on our salsa. This is one of the best salsas I've ever had and it's so simple to make. It looks like an avocado salsa, but is made with zucchini. I started growing zucchini and jalapeno in my garden specifically to make this salsa. We're bringing a large pot of water to a boil and adding in two medium sized zucchini, two large jalapenos, and a large clove of garlic. I'm going to let this boil until I can easily push a fork through the zucchini. Now I'm going to drain and transfer the zucchini, jalapenos, and garlic into a blender. You don't need to add any additional water. The zucchini is full of it. Now all we need to do is add one and a half tablespoons of oil and one teaspoon of salt. We're going to blend until smooth and set aside. My masa has been resting for at least a half hour now. So I'm going to begin heating a pan over medium low heat and get my tortillas ready. This ball of masa should give us about 16 tortillas. We're just going to divide each ball in half till we have 16 evenly sized balls. Now onto a tortilla press. I'm laminating one smooth ball of masa between the sides of a cut plastic bag and pressing to flatten. I like to flip and press a few times to get it even as well as thinner and wider. Next you're going to want to gently peel the tortilla off the plastic into your palm. Take your time and make sure you don't tear it. And the trick to really nice evenly cooked tortillas is to gently and evenly lay it into the pan. After 30 seconds you'll notice the edges start to change color and lift away from the pan. Using a spatula, gently peel and flip your tortilla and let it cook until you start to see bubbles forming. Another minute and a half or so. Flip one final time and press into the center of your tortilla like a giant button. If done correctly it should begin inflating allowing the vapor to finish cooking it through. After 30 seconds, transfer it to a clean towel to keep it warm. Once you get the hang of it, you can start pressing your next tortilla while the first one cooks. Finish these up and we can get back to the star of the show, the pork. It's now been at least two hours since I set my pork to marinate. So I'm going to pull it out, set a pan over medium heat, and melt some lard. You could also use oil, but it won't have as much flavor. 
I'm using between 3 and 4 tablespoons and once it's all hot and melted, I'm going to add about a third of the meat. Make sure you don't overcrowd the pan like I did here. I made sure to do smaller batches after this one. Cook through about 4 minutes before transferring to another container and frying up the next batch. Serve with cilantro, onion, and zucchini salsa. And enjoy! When you put everything together, you get some amazing, authentic pork tacos that you made completely from scratch. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing. I've got tons of ideas and I post every Thursday, with the occasional bonus short here and there. Thanks for watching, hope to see you next time.